Welcome back to Meet the Candidates. I'm still your host, Paul Herring. We're here at Spectacle Studios, and we're speaking with another candidate for the 34th uh, District Representative here um, out of the city of Flint, and it's Mr. Quincy Murphy. So without any further ado, I'm going to allow him to tell you a little bit about himself. Thank you. Um, once again, my name is Quincy Murphy, and I grew up in um, on East Marengo Street by the old Buick City site. Mm -hmm. and went to um, Jefferson. Bryan Middle School and Northwestern High School, graduating in class 1993. Um, came from a single parent home. My mother, Deborah Murphy, did a great job doing raising me. She worked at Hurley Hospital, siblings of four, Tina, Raphael, and Sabrina. I'm the youngest of the four. Um, my life was um, good. I came from a good parent, but um, my environment, my neighborhood uh, was a bittersweet, bad, um, situation. Um, I was molested when I was a um, young boy. Um, they used to take me into vacant houses, um, vacant lots with the grass high, um, Ophelia Bonner Park, um, just uh, all over, around the neighborhood, um, guys that were older. And for 10 years I went through that and then I broke loose and I ran away from home and my mother didn't know really why I was running away, but I was running away because I wanted to run from that problem that was happening. I was scared to talk to people. And I went through 10 years of probably bitter, angry, angry at everybody else, thinking it was everybody else's fault. I um, was silent. I didn't talk to no one. So um, then I opened up and eventually told my mom what happened to me, and um, she didn't like it. It was hard on her, it was hard on my family. Uh, went through at least about 10 years of healing and forgiveness because in order for me to um, move forward, I had to forgive and heal from what had happened. And because they took those years from me, they was not gonna take the rest of my life. So I started being a community activist, working in the community, um, doing this healing process. I didn't like to see vacant lots with high grass. I didn't like to see houses that was open. Um, it used to be bats flying around in the house while this was happening to me, so it traumatized me when it came down to seeing vacant houses open, and um, I'm still scared of bats, so, <laughs> you know, um, it was very hard for me. But I'm healed, I don't forgave, I done moved on, and it's a new day. So part of me being a community activist come from what I went through. So okay. some people really don't know the reason why I do what I do. And, um, I'm using this platform to reach out to others that if you're going through anything like that, go talk to someone. And um, don't let what happened to me happen to you. And go tell someone. So I started um, cleaning up parks. Um, they took me to Ophelia Bonner Park molested me several times and um, I just had a problem with high grass, vacant houses that was open, and um, parts that wasn't well um, kept up or um, lit up because this would have prevented them from being able to do that to me. Okay. So that's how I became involved in being a community activist and you see me out cutting grass and boarding up houses and doing the things that I could do but it's at a point now to where it's bigger than me in the city of Flint because it's still a problem. It's a massive problem. It, for the last 30 years, we've seen this um, increase in blight. Mm -hmm. You done had over $30 billion to come into the city of Flint in the last 30 years. And as a result, our neighborhood is looking like it is. So this is how I kind of evolved into being a community activist. Okay. All right. Now, in, in light of all of that, amazing story, amazing motivation. Um, you're doing, you do, you know what I mean? And you're taking care of things. Why state rep? Well, um, state rep, you know, um, God always prepared um, you for um, thing. I feel it's a calling on my life. Um, I ran for city council. That wasn't God's will for me. I've supported other candidates. Um, for mayor position, for um, city council position. I campaigned for others for over the last 20 years thinking that they was the solve all problem mm -hmm. to um, the need of the city of Flint. 
I watched the um, divide into the um, city council, the county commissioner, and the state rep. You had this person going in this direction. There was no togetherness. There was a lot of political bickering, um, no elected officials coming together. And I felt for years it's been a um, great divide where this person that's in, elected in this position, so say you got the city council, the county commissioner, and the state rep, they did not come together as one to address the issues of the city of Flint. So I felt like the state rep position for me will help me be able to bridge that um, gap with um, the lack of relationships that we have with each other. I have a relationship with Dan Kildy. I have a relationship with um, Dane Wallen, um, Councilman Brian Nolden, majority of the council. Um, I believe that I have what it takes to be able to work with people. I feel like the direction and the vision that our leaders has been taking us been a dead road in. Um, I have experience in organizing different groups, bringing people together. I work with um, churches, block clubs, elected officials, bringing a cause together. I just recently um, lobbied with the planning commission and the um, city council and the mayor and emergency manager to have $200 million implemented in a master plan. And that didn't come by me being divided with the elected officials that came by me lobbying and going to meetings behind closed doors when the cameras wasn't rolling, um, pleading to them, writing letters and um, letting them know the importance of why we feel we need this money. Because I felt like a lot of money has been um, put into the city of Flint, majority in downtown Flint. And I love the um, stuff that they is doing in downtown Flint. But I feel like we need to share space to equally divide the resources and the financial resources in the city of Flint. So by me being the state rep, we'll be able to go and lobby on the state level to bring resources back to the city of Flint that will not only help the city of Flint, but other municipalities that's facing these same issues. When you go to Detroit, Ben Harbor, they dealing with blight, they dealing with high crime, lack of recreational um, opportunities for young kids. Um, and when you look at the divide in the leadership, you don't have people that, despite us not liking one another, but dealing with the issues and sticking with the issues and being that um, we need to um, put our um, dislike, dislikes on the side and deal with what's important, high water bills. And, I mean, even if you just deal with blight, that's been people's main problem in it especially me coming to what I went through when I was younger. I do not see no elected official right now being the um, solver or have the vision that I have for bringing um, peace to the city of Flint and bringing together people for one cause, and that's to change the city of Flint for the better. Okay. You touched on high water bills. What, what about crime? What, what, what do, you, is, do you have solutions, or what do you plan on doing when you get to Lansing? About well, um, my solution for crime is to create jobs. And instantly, jobs can be created by um, bringing funding to deal with blight. You don't need a master's degree, a bachelor, or associate, or a high school diploma to get out there and cut some grass. If we put together... A uh, um, program, I'm thinking uh, probably $2.5 million a year, mm -hmm. $5 million earmark just to go in and go from one street to the other, next street, cleaning up all those vacant lots, gutting them out. See, we tear down houses, but we don't clean up the fence lines. And we do the same thing every year and get the same results. We go through once or twice a year, and we cut, and it grow back high and people complain, but we don't maintain. We don't convert into green space. See, what need to happen with is the homes that's done been torn down need to be converted into green space and just make it nice and beautiful instead of just having the fence lines, um, non-structural blight is what I call it. So it's not actually a structure, but it's um, dead trees that's done fell over the years, branches 
um, all the fence lines. When you go down, look look outside your house right now. Look down the street. Look next door. Look across the street from you. And just look how bad it is. And for years, we've done the same thing and getting the same results, and it's not making a difference. And we don't have no leader with a vision to deal with this because, you know, um, maybe one thing more um, of a concern in them than the overall community. When you look at the schools that's closed down, we got 23 schools that done closed in urban neighborhoods. You got massive amounts of homes that's been um, abandoned because people done left the city of Flint because no job. So I'm thinking to start off, to prevent crime, you could create jobs because people are looking for jobs. And they don't, these corners and them being like these stores selling drugs, that don't became their general motors. They don't have no um, sense of belonging. Listen, I, I need to stop you now because you only have a few minutes left and I want to give you an opportunity to look at the camera, look at the people at home and ask them to vote for you. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Um, I don't take this lightly. Um, this is going to be a um, role ahead of all of us, not just me, because we all going to have to come out and roll up our sleeves, take off our suit and ties, and put on our boots and get out there and do what we can to bring back our neighborhood. You give me the opportunity and trust and believe me, I'm a man of my word. They say judge a tree by the fruit that it bear. When you look at the work that I've been doing, um, adopting Dewey Park, um, trying to reopen Bunch Elementary School, lobbying to get $200 million in the city of Flint, um, lobbying to get $60,000 for summer youth and neighborhood stabilization grants. I have a proven track record that I can be the change that we need for tomorrow. We can't keep on electing the same people and getting the same results. We got people that's already in positions as elected officials now, and as a result, we still don't have nothing. We still out there complaining. So I'm asking that you give me a chance and not only you give me a chance, pray for me because I can't be brought, I ain't for sale, and I ain't taking endorsements from somebody to shut me up. So if they ain't right, I, I don't need them endorsing me. All I need you to do is go to the polls and vote for me August 5th, Quincy Murphy for state representative. Nice, nice. Why don't you give out a phone number, your uh, headquarters, if anybody wants to give you a hand? If anyone want to volunteer, our headquarters is on Welch Street, 826 Welch, across from Little Caesars. Our phone number is 858-1014. That's 858-1014. We need you to come out and help us knock on doors and come talk to me. If you have some concerns or something that I did not answer for you, just come on and talk to me, and we'll see what we can do to make a change. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Meet the Candidates. That was Quincy Murphy. We'll be back right after this.